Hey everyone, it's Ajoni Anime and today we're going to talk about Japan Sinks. <laughs> so I wanted to start my summer anime 2020 review, so I'm going to start with Japan Sinks as because all of it is already on Netflix, it's 10 episodes, it's a quick watch. So let's get the technical stuff out of the way. First, Japan Sinks was a disaster novel written by Sayako Komatsu in 1973 and Sayansaru decided to make it an anime and they got Masaki Yuasa as a director and that's why it looks so weird because he's known for his different art style like in Devilman Crybaby and the first time I watched Devilman Crybaby I was like mm, this art style is nasty but you get past it and you get used to it the more you look at it yeah. so Japan Sinks looks weird because of who the director is but of all of Masaki Yuasa's work, I think Japan Sinks is the most normal looking one. Yeah, it's the most normal looking one, if you can use that word. But you get used to it. It's not your traditional 2D anime kind of look, so it's different. The first episode is like, oh, this is really different to look at. But yeah, so Masaki Yuasa is a director. He's he does amazing work he did amazing work with japan sinks i know that for the show that it's either you really hate it or you really love it there's no in between like mm. and i'm on the end of you know i really like it i really do and i see where people come from when they say they don't like it but i like it and i would recommend you to watch it definitely especially because it's only 10 episodes and it's really quick yeah you can watch it in one day less than one day even though it's 10 episodes it kind of feels longer because it puts you through so much like every episode something happened and every episode you're like wow can we get a break but we don't get any breaks in japan like things the i think 10 episodes there's hit after hit something is going to come up somebody's gonna die <laughs> you're gonna get upset you're probably gonna cry it's a whole emotional roller coaster so like you know, Japan Sings follows the Muto family and you're tr they're your traditional nuclear family mom dad brother sister you know traditional nu nuclear family doesn't get more traditional doesn't get more square than that and it follows them throughout their journey of from when the earthquake happens and just them trying to get to each other and then get into safety saving their lives because like the title says, Japan does sink, a huge earthquake happens and it causes the islands to sink. And Japan has frequent earthquakes, so it's not shocking. It's like, oh, is that an earthquake? And everybody's like, okay, cool, we can continue with our day and just go home, finish everything up and just go home. And then after that, after the first earthquake hits and it's just like, oh, you know let's just go home the huge like the big one it just come and it just rock them devastate the place everything mash up people die obviously you know people die it, it, the action starts from the go it's just like hey, I say me know you're not comfort i go me know you're not comfort dilly dally the earthquake i'm um, no the japanaga start saying no we're now wait till episode two episode one right no so that's what happens and for Ayumu, I want to like focus on her character a bit because she's basically the main character. I know that I said that the story follows the family, but in the end, you can see that it's Ayumu's story more than anything else. And Masaki Yosa did a wonderful, a wonderful job of letting you know that when all of this was done, this was just Ayumu's story. And you could see how her story could have played out among many other Japanese people who were there when the earthquake happened. In the first episode, her locker room get thrown about and like people are dying. People got their head hit, people got crushed. And she, for some reason, she's just fine. She's fine. She doesn't have any cuts, she doesn't have any bruises. And then she sees her teammate dying and asking for help. And she runs away. And while she, in the process of running away, she gets a cut and she gets a cut on her leg that she conceals the entire the entire show she conceals that cut the entire 10 episodes and it's really frustrating to watch because you're like girl this this don't necessary like when she met up with her dad he had a first aid kit her brother had cut his eyelid and she, he used the first aid kit on her brother and she didn't think hey dad i have a cut on my leg let me let's let's treat that no 
but ended up by episode three and four they were in Shan City. They had a whole health center in Shan City. And Ayumo was working in the health center and she just never think to get the cut treated at all. For cause for her, she was battling survivor's guilt because she left her teammates she left her teammates dying to be honest and she didn't help any of them and she felt bad there was a scene where she checked her group chat and she realized that you know not everyone is dead but she still felt bad for running away and leaving them so she decided that this cut is her punishment and you know she's punishing herself especially after her dad and nanami died they both died trying to help her she felt guilty for those things because if she didn't want yams her dad would have never ended up digging in that area where he blew up and that's a very frightening death she had seen the explosive sign like right like just a, right before he blew up she had seen it and she probably felt like you know she could have warned him quicker she should have let him know or maybe she should have checked earlier so she's battling, she's battling all of this guilt she left her teammates to die her dad died because she's a spoiled brat, honestly. She had a crush on Koga, who was in their group while they were trying to save their lives and in Japan and all of that. And Nanami was being really nice to Koga and she didn't really like, Ayumu didn't like that, that feeling. She felt, she was jealous that Nanami was being nice to Koga and you know, Nanami was being friendly with Koga and Koga seemed, Koga seemed to be, you know, reciprocating that. And she was jealous, so, you know, she, she did a, li a quick little, ugh. I'm hurt, can you help me, Nanami? And she's like, let's go to the bathroom. And then, they, you know, they go in the bushes because there's nowhere else to go. There are no toilets. There are no toilets. And Nanami dies. And yeah, I, I, it's her fault. It's Ayumu's fault why Nanami died. But I don't think that's the story. I don't think that's the essence of the story. Yeah, I think Masaki Yasa was realistic in how he told his story because the characters died at the flip of a coin it was very luck based like if you aren't lucky you're just not gonna make it they just and nanami and korichiro the dad they were just unlucky and death that just stand up that just stand up in the road i wait for somebody with unlucky to walk past him that's all him just stand up in the road i wait for one unlucky character to just walk past him and him just take with them three points like that if something like this happened you just have to be lucky and you have to hope that you're lucky and have a random array of survival skills because that's one thing with the characters almost everybody had a strange array of survival skills that helped them out in the end it's like oh like go had learned how to make a compass out of a needle from a game the dad was like Mr. Do It All. He was like their survival icon. He knew everything about everything. He was basically a man's man. After they met the old man, you realize that each of the characters is kind of like a micro a microcosm. Each of the characters and like the party of the survivors, the main characters in the story, it's a microcosm of what Japan would have been like if something like that happened. You have this traditional nuclear family who aren't fully Japanese because the mom is Filipino so they're so they're mixed and then you have the art so you have the mixed kids the immigrant mom the Japanese dad Koga would be your traditional Japanese kid Nanami as well and then you'd have then Kite is your new age like he doesn't live in Japan, he lives in Estonia, but he is Japanese and he's like, you know, the young people of the country, I think that's whatever. And the old man was, is one of those people like highlights that old people are still very much holding on to their ways of what's Japanese and what isn't and, you know, go away with this foreign stuff, which can be said for like most old people across the world. He's always very into international stuff and he just, you know, he doesn't really like Japan like that. And the old man is like, hey, you're, you're Japanese and you're going to act like you're Japanese because we're, we come from a great country and this is our country. You know, nationalism in old people is really strong. So it attacks that as well as like, who is Japanese and who isn't Japanese? Where the nationalists died after they told them that they couldn't come on the, they couldn't come on the boat because 
a human go weren't they were not fully japanese and you know if you could rip them apart and give their japanese half they would make one japanese kid and they could come on the boat i mean look at that king solomon reference obviously the mom couldn't do that that's that's a ridiculous request so obviously you know she sent them off and um, they died and I think the message there was, hey, yeah, nationalism is important, but in a situation like disaster, nationalism doesn't have a place because I can assure you that everyone that everyone that called Japan their home when that earthquake happened was worrying about the well-being of Japan because that's their home. That's where they live. That's where their family is. That's where they work. That's where they lay their head at night. It's important to them that their home is okay. It doesn't matter if they were born in Japan. It doesn't matter if they're mixed. It doesn't matter if they're foreigners that now live there. It doesn't matter because when that earthquake happened and Japan started sinking, everyone in Japan wanted Japan to be okay because that's where they live. That's where their heart is. Nationalism, yes, but also no because listen it doesn't matter where you come from your race it doesn't matter where you come from your race how you look etc etc the point is we're all in a time of crisis and we need to help each other japan sinks is one of those shows that shifts your perspective because while i'm watching it i'm thinking about how unprepared i am for an earthquake if something like this were, ha were to happen in jamaica i wouldn't know like i wouldn't know what to do so they had this raffle to take the people of the islands only some people were allowed to leave you know young people people with great promise that notion was very ableist number one the government also had to decide who gets to live and who gets to die it was also ages because old people didn't make it to the list either and people with great promise you know kids athletes etc etc et and they how the government had devised that they were gonna save everyone were they gonna save some of the Japanese people that they'd have a raffle and once again with a raffle here's the theme of luck you're just lucky if your number get called or not like obviously all the politicians them gone all the politicians and the rich people them gone but them business them them have other hosts them have other places for them and here you are just a regular citizen of Japan you just have to hope say you're lucky <laughs> it's nothing but luck everything in this show was just luck running on luck no rhyme or reason hope that every character lucky and that's the thing you do hope that every character is lucky and hope keeps you hope keeps you watching hope keeps the characters I'm going uh, japan sings had this way of combining hope death and luck in one big ball and hook you and just have you watching like hey can everybody live even the old man even no but it's just like no he's just simply not lucky enough granted he sacrificed his life to save them so that was amazing chef kiss amazing scene favorite scene the entire show made me cry it combines all those things and it keeps you watching because you hope that everybody gets to live even though you know that somebody has to die every episode it's a one death an episode quarter kind of show and it's so ooh, it just it upsets you because you're just like you want everybody to live and in episode nine in episode nine when mr onodera woke up and didn't die i was just like oh my gosh who's gonna die now because like someone has to die it's a one death and episode quarter you can't avoid that and i'm just like who's gonna die now oh my goodness who who is gonna die now in the last few episodes everybody sacrificed their life to save ayumu and go and koga scene is just like hey i'm gonna put my all out there to save these people because i love them and these are the people i care about and i know i'm not going to make it but i'm going to do it and it was so heartbreaking and it was just mm, tears nothing but there is a thing where you don't get much time to grieve and obviously you don't because they're in a disaster and Masaki Iwasa is letting you know that in situations like this you're not a time for grieve you just have to keep going keep moving because in the one scene where in the one scene where you know grieving might have happened Ayumu had decided that you know she was gonna grieve her teammates that had died and She's gonna grieve her teammates that had died and she 
she knows she bend down to cry and whatever and the minute she bends down people start falling from the sky dead because a helicopter crashed so they're letting you know like no 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 we don't have no time for that no tears keep moving you have to save your life you have to save yourself you don't have to hope that you're lucky and you hope that the people around you are lucky and yeah that's it japan thinks it's all about luck and how lucky are you how prepared are you for an earthquake or an earthquake of that nature who who is that prepared for that i don't imagine being a hundred percent prepared for a disaster like that especially to like your family members are dying you can only leave the country on a raffle just all of that I'll, I'll them someday. <laughs> no hopefully that never happens but the fact that it's possible that those stuff could that stuff could happen you know it's kind of in the back of your head like whoa i'm not prepared at all i i wouldn't know what to do kind of makes you want to be one of those doomsday preppers but like how realistic is that japan sings is an amazing show and i give it like a full seven out of ten simply because i didn't like the one death and episode quota and there were some scenes that were a bit too unrealistic for me like when the mom had asked to borrow her um a lady's phone she said no well maybe that's realistic i don't know but i don't see why in a situation like that i wouldn't give someone a phone call but you know there are a few scenes that were just like oh come on no like you can't stop no you know you can't stop but apart from that everything else was amazing the storyline the story writing the the stories because it was obviously it was telling multiple stories all at once that it was the story that you were being told were like perfect amazing storyline everything what do you think about japan things did you like it did you watch it are you going to watch it i know i didn't upload last week and there's literally no excuse for that i just didn't so i want to try to get on a schedule i i I want to try to upload every wednesday at 5 30. so like could you guys try to hold me to that you know wednesdays at 5 30 p.m this video should be up by wednesday at 5 30 and i might be starting a manga series but you guys kind of just have to wait and see you know stay tuned subscribe for all of that and yeah thank you guys for watching your first time on my channel don't forget to subscribe for more content don't forget to like comment all of those stuff and i'll see you in my next video which which might be this week (laughs) might be next week i don't know please bye